Hey, what's going on? Welcome to The Doug Show. It's Doug Cunnington here, and in this episode, I interview Madeline Taylor from Content Refined. And I've been working with Content Refined over the past, like six weeks or so, on a specific case study on one of my affiliate sites. So we went and improved a few posts, about 10 of them, and traffic went up on those posts collectively by 13% in just four weeks. Now, in this interview, we go into like the step-by-step process of what they did, but also we generalize like the process so that you can do it on your own as well. Now, it's important to note that I am an affiliate for Content Refined. So if you you know happen to purchase one of their services after following one of my links, then I get a commission for it, which I definitely appreciate. Um, however, I was going to say that I mean, the work that they did 100% like speaks for itself. So when they, you know, came to me with the idea, I knew that it was going to work already. Now, I didn't think it was going to work 100% of the time and and we mentioned that in the interview, but just overall it's it was a very good ROI um from my perspective. So, I encourage you to uh, maybe check it out too if it's something that would benefit your site specifically. And Content Refined has hooked us up with a discount code. So if you are, and but the thing is, it's, it's time limited, all right? So if you're listening to this shortly after this episode is published, then you probably can take advantage of this deal. So you can save 15% by using the coupon code Doug, that's D-O-U-G, that's my name. So you can save 15% if you purchase between uh, like June 10th and June 23rd, 2019. So I'm sorry if you are catching it after after the sale ends, after the discount ends, but it's just a, a promo to sort of, you know, celebrate this case study, which turned out so well for me. Yeah, let's get to the interview now with Maddie. Hey, what's going on? It's Doug Cunnington here, and I'm sitting with Maddie. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing really good, and you're from Content Refined, but for the folks that don't know you, can you give us a little intro about what you do there and uh, maybe a a little tiny bit about Content Refined? Yeah, sounds great. So um, my name is uh, is Maddie, and I am the uh, CEO and co-founder of Content Refined, which is uh, a small content marketing agency that's uh, based up in Canada. Um, and so what we what we do is we help people, small business owners, or anybody who even has like a niche website. Um, we we help them with their content strategy, and we help them create really great, high quality content that uh, will hopefully drive more traffic to their site. Awesome. Very cool. And how did you get involved with Content Refined? Um, well, it's kind of, it was kind of an accident. Um, <laughs> so basically, uh, I moved to a really small town uh, called Collingwood, Ontario. I moved for love. Um, and uh, I had left a really great job in Toronto. Um, and so I was sort of networking up here and and meeting a bunch of new folks. Uh, and I came across this guy named John, um, who I think you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, John basically was ha- had also just left his big engineering job um, and moved back to this small town and was sort of launching this online business world of his and uh, and really following that career path for himself. Um, and so he was looking for for help, and I was originally hired on actually to um, help him with his portfolio of money sites. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what he had intended for my job to be was uh, basically to figure out a a really good marketing strategy for his own portfolio of of money sites um, to really get the process going for the for the content creation piece. Um, and so. We did like a lot of research and a lot of uh, a lot of sort of procedure building and built out this really awesome um, little robust process of of consistent content creation. And uh, once that was that was done, we kind of launched it as a service. Um, and so that's how Content Refined was born. 
Gotcha. And that is, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know what happened there, <laughs> but um, that is Authority Website Income. It is. Um, so John Haver from Authority Website Income. So I'll put a link to that um, in case people aren't familiar. But when I got started online um, in 2013, John was at least a couple years ahead of me. So I contacted him and we've had a good relationship over the years. So um, Content Refined is an option because you guys were doing so good with your I mean, you had extra bandwidth and you were like, well, people need this service, right? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I had kind of worked myself out of a job at that point because the the content was happening and the creation process was so automated that um, that I kind of had this extra time and I really yeah, had worked myself out of a job. So we we're like, hey, let's wrap this up and put a little bow on it and call it content refined and launch it to people who who need this service. Cool. And how long ago was that? when you launch Content Refine? That's coming up to three years. So um, this fall will be three years. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And um, what was your background, like your previous job and all that stuff? Yeah, prior to that, I had been working in um, in Toronto at a medical technology uh, startup. So it, a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, a little more more technical, but, uh, yeah, it was basically like a, a software development agency. Um, and, and we created, uh, created some medical platforms for doctors. Gotcha. And then what did you do there? Um, I was a project manager actually. So okay. in terms of, so my skill set from there to, to come and proceduralize the crap out of something was something, <laughs> was right. something that I was, uh, pretty used to. And, uh, the documentation piece was something that I, I was very strong at, so it uh, it was a good fit. Just a a bit of a shift of of gears. Like I didn't know anything about marketing um, or content or SEO really before that. So it was uh, it was brand new to me, and so it's been it's been a lot of a lot of work, but a lot of fun. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I have a similar background, and I think we, the thing you mentioned is like being able to like look at a process and then document it and then have other people do it. Like project yeah. managers have to do it all the time. But like, if you haven't done it before, it's really hard. Cause like people will Definitely. write down what they think and then give it to the, the team or whatever. And then the team has questions and then, you know, they want to blame the team, but it's really, you know, you didn't document it well. So yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Interesting. I actually I see that you you got a PMP des- designation here on your uh, mm-hmm. on your Skype, so I was wondering what that was all about. Yep, yep. So I got my PMP. Did you get yours at, at back in the I, day? I or? never actually officially got the uh, the designation, but uh, but I would consider myself a, a project manager. Sure, they, you know <laughs> it's just jumping through a lot of hoops and then paying a lot of money. A lot of money. <laughs> yeah. so, but then once you get it, you just keep it active. So exactly. I've done that. So, okay. Yeah. The reason why we're here today is we're talking about content upgrades, which shouldn't be confused with the email marketing thing of content upgrades. We're talking about taking content and improving it to basically get more traffic. So mm-hmm. can you tell me about how you guys got this idea for I I guess now it's a product, but it's a strategy. We're going to talk about step-by-step how to do it. So take, take me through that a little. Yeah, sure. So I guess it started, um, it wasn't actually our idea. It was, it came to us from, from clients wanting the service. So, um, we were, you know, in the, in the thick of, um, really understanding, um, like driving factors and, and ranking factors for, uh, brand new content. Um, but we weren't really focused on existing content and it wasn't until we had like, you know, a handful of clients come to us and say, Hey, you know, like I've already targeted this keyword. Um, I've got like a 3000 word blog post on this topic. Um, I don't want to rewrite the whole thing. Like I don't want to have a brand new piece of content about a a keyword that I'm already targeting. That seems like a, a bad ROI. Um, can, can we figure out how to sort of like refresh this existing content to make it useful again? Um, and so that's sort of where we got the idea. And then, um, with the, with the help of, you know, like we always do, you know, we test things out and with the help of different tools, we figured out a really good system on how we could predictably, um, 
improve certain pieces of content so that they would uh, perform well on search engines. Um, and so once we got uh, that that process sort of nailed down, that's when we launched it as a standalone service. Um, and it's uh, it's been very popular. And um, the what's interesting about it is that the the results show immediately because um, these pieces of content are already uh, indexed and they're already ranking. So it just really gives them a, a, a bump, which has been um, interesting to see and document. Yes. And I know I, I've done this strategy in the past, but without as much like a rigorous process. So um, I, I knew that it was going to work. And I was going to say, uh, we can mention that we're working together some, right? So yeah. Um, I had uh, I have a website and Content Refined worked with a few of the posts, about ten posts over there, and I will be sharing this in like the show notes and stuff like that, so people can check it out. There will be an accompanying blog post as well, but in general, traffic um, for the ten posts over the course of like four weeks or so went up yeah. by almost thirteen percent, so twelve point eight three percent, and the individual posts. Some of them only went up by 10%. Some of them went down just a little bit, which could be seasonal or something else. Um, but a few of the posts went up by like a hundred and some odd percent, like multiple times uh, the amount of traffic that they were getting before. So again, this was just in four weeks. Traffic went up by about 13% on these 10 posts. So it definitely works. And like you said, the cool part is Google already likes the post. So it's just a matter of like, optimizing them in the right way. Right. And it's not about, um, yeah, it's not about basically waiting for something to become indexed and then waiting for things to, you know, get slow, slow traffic, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, it's an immediate bump and we see it right away, which is cool. Yep. And it's like, if you're doing on page on site work, typically you'll, (laughs) you'll have the changes happen faster. The impact happens faster versus, you know, if you're, if you're building links, it could take a little while for those to come into play. Or like you said, if it's a brand new post, then you you have to wait a little while for things to happen. So, um, we will take you through the process and Maddie, I think this is where, um, I'm going to not know as much about what you guys do. So can we just go like step by step on how you do this? Yeah, for sure. So, um, I guess, we'll start with like the initial phone call. So I'll, uh, I'll jump on a call with a prospective client who, um, who wants this service. Um, and we'll sort of go through their site, their goals, their, we'll pull, we'll scrape the site with, uh, for some data and analytics to sort of understand, um, where their strong suits are and where they could improve. Um, so we'll do this thing called like a content audit. I think we did it for your site, right? Yes. Um, where, uh, where we'll, Pull some pull some data from the site and and then understand um, exactly like what posts are ranking for what and then what um, yeah what articles are not uh, performing as well as they should be based on the keyword that they're targeting and based on the metrics associated with that keyword. So um, we generally like to go for keywords that have. Um, a pretty high search volume, but a a lower competition. So if we see that there's a a keyword like that, um, that is not ranking very well for a post, then we know that that's probably a good, um, a a good place to start for an upgrade. Um, And so then we'll take a deeper dive into that post and see where else we can optimize it to get it to rank for related key terms. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's when a, a tool, so sorry, backtracking, Um, we will present the sort of client audit, um, present a set of recommendations for posts that we should upgrade. And then the client will say yay or nay. Um, in your case, you said yay for about 10 of them. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we will start with the actual upgrade. Um, so the upgrade, um, is, Essentially, we'll we'll use this tool called Market Muse. I think we've spoken about it a few times before. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll plug the existing article into Market Muse. We'll plug in the um, the targeted keyword as well as the targeted um, 
like a article title. Um, and then we'll have the article analyzed through this tool. Um, this tool is really interesting because it basically scrapes the web for any other related article to that topic um, and will give you recommendations on on how to improve your article so that it will hopefully beat out the 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 competition. Right. Um, and so what it will do is it will spit out a, a list of keyword variants that you should be sprinkling through your text. Um, and it will give you uh, a set of like content gaps um, that your writer should write about. Um, and so those are really great for like uh, additional little pieces of content to fit into your existing article um, because it's identifying this tool is identifying the the like subjects that you have not touched on um, that will make your article better and that will make Google recognize it as a, uh, as a piece of content that is um, in depth and that is well-researched and that is useful um, to the readers. So once we understand sort of all those content gaps, different keyword variants, we will um, compile that into a bit of a content brief. Um, and then we will sit like we'll we'll go through the existing content and um, we will come up with like a list of questions that we think um, the the post should aim to answer. Um, and so we'll add those questions into the brief and then we'll send that off to the writer. Okay. So once the writer get that brief, um, they'll go through the post to understand sort of like the tone and like the um, what's already been sort of covered. Um, and then they will work on sort of creating additional content that fits really, really well and congruently with the post. Um, and then once that's done, they'll send it off to us. Uh, we'll, we'll plug it through Market Muse to make sure that it is, uh, that, that the content score has improved um, and that it, uh, based on Market Muse uh, should predictably rank on on a search engine mm -hmm. um, better than it did before, uh, and then we will publish it for you. Got it. Okay, yeah. and I'm gonna. That was very good, <laughs> like a good <laughs> explanation in a concise way. So that that was amazing, Maddie. Oh, I'm good. Gonna, I'm glad. Was I'm it a gonna, little long winded? <laughs> no, it's good. You you, uh, you got to take a breath. Um, uh, but I know, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. Um, so, but I'm going to go back and ask, like there were certain pieces, um, that I know some people were going to wonder about. So, um, <laughs> back at, at step one, um, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned like a, you know, quote, high search volume. Um, yes. can you give like a, an example or some ranges where it's worthwhile to, to look to do this? Yeah, totally. I think that varies um, from like niche to niche. But uh, do you say niche or niche? Um, I'm an American, uh, a clumsy <laughs> so you American. Say niche. Yep, I sure do. Yep, and I okay. just you know it's in my it's in my UR, it's in my domain name. So I just I'm just leaning into it. So niche. Okay, yeah, but feel so free. So I'm Canadian, so I say niche. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. You can do that. Yeah. I guess it's the French way. Um, it's but, it's uh, correct. I think you're correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, mo Canadians <laughs> mostly are correct. So. <laughs> um, no, but all joking aside, depends on what niche you're in. And um, so rule of thumb, I would say anything over a thousand, but if it's in sort of a less competitive niche, I would do anything over 500. Okay, cool. Yeah. And I think one... Uh, I guess maybe a guideline that people could use, although you could tell me I'm wrong, is um, if you just look at the keywords that you're ranking for and you see like most of them are, you know, high, then you probably have a higher range that you need to aim for. And if most of yours are pretty low, I mean, maybe I know a lot of people use the keyword golden ratio that are watching this or they're familiar with it anyway. And maybe a lot of their keywords are in the, you know, 300 range. So in that case, maybe you aim in the 300 to 500 range and you're just kind of looking at a smaller window. So is that an okay way to look at it? Absolutely. Yeah. And then I think you also, if we're going to talk about search volume, we should talk about competition score as well. Um, and basically anything that it has like a higher percentage in the competition, is going to be harder to rank for. So we look for anything sort of under 30%. Okay. Yeah. And um, what tool are you using for that 
competition difficulty metric? So, yeah, we use a, a number of different tools, but right now um, our favorites are um, Ahrefs mm-hmm. um, as well as uh, SE Cockpit. Um, it's a Swiss marketing apps platform. Um, and although uh, although it, it's kind of slow, um, it does spit out really good good data. Okay. And yeah. I haven't used that one, but I've heard of it. Um, Ahrefs is really good. I use Ahrefs Sunbrush. Is um, as yeah. well. And I've been playing with uh, KW Finder, which seems to have a pretty good uh, metric as well. So yeah, yeah, actually, we we did you ever take a look at um, the massive data analysis study that we did on different tools? I, I saw that it was out there and then I perused yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that was a couple years ago now. So I'd be interested to sort of um, revisit that and see what what tools what other tools and if there are any new tools um out there that we haven't discovered yet to see sort of uh what their what their predictability of ranking um is so i'd be interested to revisit this conversation in like august if we if we decide to revisit that yeah i think yeah Yeah. a refresh of that article would be interesting but yeah, it's really hard. I mean, I think some of the tools, like I remember Longtail Pro had like their competition, um, what was it? Keyword competitive competitiveness metric, the KC stat, which was really good in the beginning, but then over time it became like less accurate and like yeah. just not very useful. Um, and I don't know if they've refreshed it or anything like that. So yeah, yeah. And moving on, um, speaking of tools, uh, you mentioned Market Muse, and it for people that don't know, it's a very sophisticated, like data driven, like content analysis tool. It's very expensive, though, so really, you can only afford it if you're like a content agency, like Content Refined, or if you have like a media company, basically. So, yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about like what Market Muse can do? I know you mentioned it analyzes the uh, competition, it analyzes content related to the terms, but what kind of like uh, other information? I know you mentioned some of it, but I kind of want to just dive a little deeper for the people that never use Market Muse. Yeah, for sure. So Market Muse actually it's growing and it has a bunch of added functionalities that we need to sort of explore since we haven't really done that yet. But for the purpose of, of content refined, we use it extensively for um for content planning and mapping um and for content analyzing. Um so we we use it to edit every single piece of content that we um, deliver to our clients, whether it's new or um, whether it's upgraded content. Um, and so what it, what it's great for is, um, is that it gives you like different keyword variants um, that you should be using and it will like recommend where you should even place them. Like it's really, it's a really, really sophisticated, sophisticated tool. Um, and, We've done a ton of studies on it um, that that basically that basically say that the use of the extensive use of Market Muse leads to um, content that does perform better. Um, and so I think that it's likely because uh, of the fact that it helps you with your content briefing um, with like suggestions of different subtopics, um, sub suggestions of, of, um, keyword variants, um, suggestions of like questions that you should be aiming to answer, uh, throughout your, your, any given text. Um, and, uh, and then, yeah, just like the, the being able to compare it to any other subject, um, on the internet or sorry, with any other, blog article on that subject on the internet is, is a really, really useful, um, functionality to have. So I think, uh, I think it's a great tool. Um, I think that it's a very expensive tool. (laughs) Yeah. It's very expensive. Yeah. It's really expensive. Um, but I, I do think that it gives us that competitive advantage, um, on the market. Yeah. I I agree a hundred percent. I've used a couple other tools, um, and they, give you a piece of the information, but it doesn't do the keyword variance as well. 
Um, mm-hmm. And I mean, I understand why it's so expensive. I mean, they're pulling so much data and then they're analyzing it and parsing it and then reorganizing it and like extracting what you care about, all those yeah. keyword variants. So, I mean, we could talk about it conceptually and see how it works, but I imagine, you know, it's it's expensive to pay for the servers to run all that stuff in the background, which is why it's so expensive and the huge value that it brings. I mean, it's like a no-brainer. Oh for content refined to use it. And I imagine like big media companies that just do tons of content. That makes sense too. Yeah. Um, so it's a great tool and you could, so there are some cheaper tools that can kind of do some stuff. Um, yeah. Like cognitive SEO. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you know of any tool. others? I, I, uh, cognitive SEO is sort of our, if, if market muses servers are down or something, mm-hmm. um, uh, we'll use cognitive SEO. We think it's, we think it's a great tool. We're actually just finishing up a data analysis study um, with them um, to to see whether we should be working with them more often. Gotcha. And yeah. I know there's Page Optimizer Pro, mm-hmm. um, which I'm an affiliate for, so um, everyone be aware of that. But mm-hmm. um, it it provides really good information as well, but it's not quite as um, like user friendly, I guess. Okay. And I haven't played with it as much. So everyone just, you know, <clears throat> remember that caveat. So be aware. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So moving on, you, you do the analysis about how much content is added. Cause content refined, like is they do everything, right? Yeah. Okay. So about yeah. how much content is added? Do you add images? Like what's the extent of additional yeah. content? Yeah. So, um, again, it, it kind of depends on like the suggestion from market muse, but usually we'll end up adding between anywhere between sort of 500 and a thousand words of content, um, to fill up those content gaps. Um, and then of course we'll, we'll add in new images, we'll place new links. Um, and, uh, that's, that's basically it. Oh, and, and we'll update like, so say, say it's a blog from like 2000, 16. Um, and it references 2016 throughout the text a lot. We'll up, update that, um, to like 2019, um, okay. and make sure that it's like current and that the stats, if, if you have like a, a blog post that has a bunch of statistics, um, just to make sure that they're updated and current. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That makes sense. Any other, like observations on, on the process or if someone was trying to do it on their own, any su- suggestions? Um, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, I would suggest cleaning it. Like if, if it's uh say, so a lot of the time, um, when we perform this service, it's because somebody's just bought, um, a brand new site. So they, they've just bought all of this content that they don't really know anything about and uh, some of it's not performing well. And then we'll go through it and we'll be like, okay, this is written terribly. Like this is something that we need to completely rewrite. Like this was not a native English speaker who wrote this. Um, let's, let's clean it up. So we will also, uh, edit it extensively to make sure that it's, uh, high quality and, and written correctly because that matters. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a great point. So I can imagine people buying sites and then they obviously are trying to get like an ROI and like if they can go and improve, I don't know, let's say they have, they bought a site with a hundred posts and they, they get like 20 of them done running the 80, 20, right? Like they can yeah. make a huge, I mean, they can make a huge difference on, um, huge difference yeah. on the traffic, on the earnings within potentially just a month or something like that. So yeah. amazing. And do, do you guys uh, have some case studies on this? Oh, definitely. Yeah. We have lots of case studies on this um, that I can share in the, in the show notes if you'd like. Yep. So that, yeah. that's perfect. I'll, I'll include those and I, I suspect maybe some of my information will be in there at some point. I'm not sure, but yeah. <laughs> um, cool. So one of the other things um, that, you guys have over content refined is templates to do some stuff. And you, you mentioned that maybe the audience can get a hold of those templates. How can they do yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. So I've got a, uh, a podcast special page, um, that essentially allows, um, anybody listening to this who wants to check it out, 
um, allows them to go, go in and download, um, a bunch of different templates, uh, that will allow them to write, uh, different styles of article, uh, or sorry, different styles of articles, um, using the content refined templates. Um, and so those are templates that we use internally that we send to all of our writing team to make sure that they're all, uh, sort of writing the same style and same format. Um, so it's super helpful if, uh, if, you're starting out and, and you're doing some of your own posts or if you've got like a writer in house and you'd like to sort of proceduralize things a little bit better, um, then, um, uh, then you can use those and, and that should help with the content creation side of things. Perfect. Thanks a yeah. lot for that. And everyone I'll I'll put links in the description and all that. So if you're driving in your car, you don't have to figure out how to write it down. Well, uh, everybody check out Content Refined. Um, and like I said, I'll put links and stuff for all the things that we talked about. So thanks again, Maddie. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thanks again to Maddie and Content Refined. Don't forget to take advantage of the 15% off that you can get with coupon code Doug, D-O-U-G. And you could find links in the sh- like description or show notes, what do we call it on a podcast? So you can get to the link and check it out. And I can tell you that um, I paid for, I should have mentioned it earlier at the very beginning, but I paid for my, my stuff, right? So they, they, um, approached me with the idea, but I knew it was such a great idea. I'm happy to pay for it. Right. Um, I've done these sort of, you know, content improvement strategies, but never so methodically in such a surgical way. Like you can, approach it with a tool like Market Muse. So we went on and on about Market Muse, of, of course, but without that tool, um, it's a little bit more difficult to like really nail it. Now, I can't remember if we mentioned it um, specifically in the interview, but like one of the ways you can do this 100% manually without any tools, that, especially paid tools, I guess you are using a tool, but it's not a paid premium tool, but you can use the search console, right? The Google search console, which everyone probably, you know, is using. You can pull the data, right? You can pull the keywords and keyword phrases that certain URLs are ranking for. So one way to approach it would be to use like a, a tool like SEMrush to see like where you're ranking for certain keywords and then to narrow it down um, as far as like the competition level, maybe how you feel about the content and that sort of thing. And then you can go check out the keywords that that post is ranking for. And again, through the Google Search Console free tool, and then you end up with a CSV of data. You can see the number of impressions, the number of clicks, and just what's going on with those certain keywords. From there, you can decide if you want to optimize for certain keywords. So for example, if you realize and see that you're ranking for a certain keyword that you don't even mention, you don't have a section, um, but it's relevant enough that Google is sending traffic your way and people are taking a look at it. Well, if you just add a section with like that topic in there, so I would advise to use like an H2 or H3 tag using the keyword, maybe a partial match in the H2 or H3 subheading and then writing, you know, a paragraph or a couple paragraphs around that topic. Then you're actually intentionally trying to, you know, serve that specific reader that specific visitor to your site based on whatever their search query is. Now, again, I said it's like totally manual, like you're downloading it, uh, you're downloading the list of keywords, you're using the search console. It's really old school, like SEO, like that's what people recommended, you know, years ago before I even knew what SEO stood for. That sort of optimizing was out there. The huge advantage with like working with Market Muse or a similar tool that can go out and review the competition for you, consolidate the data, 
and then tell you, use this keyword, you know, four times and put this other keyword variation in to one or two subheadings. Like it's that level of, you know, information. And again, if you can't afford Market Muse or like most of us probably can't afford Market Muse, it's very expensive. <laughs> like even if you're making good money, it's a lot of money to pay. Um you can use a company like Content Refined to do that work in a you know fully outsourced fashion. And like I said, I, I know it's not going to work 100% of the time for every single post that you try this on, but most of the time, on average, it's going to do better than it was doing before. And some of the metrics that I didn't mention um, specifically, which I'll put a link to the actual blog post that has a lot of this information. So... Overall, um, like the page views went up by about 13%. Individual blog posts saw a improvement from anywhere from 10% to 186%. Uh, And I think we mentioned it in the interview. There were, I think, two posts where the traffic dropped by like 2 or 3%. Um, So that's not great. But at the same time, I don't know if it's due to the changes that I made um, with content refined, or if it's a seasonal situation or just a rankings fluctuation, um, things happen from time to time. So, uh, you know, that's why I, I went with uh, a project, a case study of 10 posts. If you just try like one post, your mileage may vary. If you get a handful of them, then you're going to see just overall good results. So moving on, uh, individual Pages on improvement in sessions um, up to about 218%. Um, so that means individual pages went up a lot. Um, in some cases, certain certain blog posts uh, had an improvement of, you know, say 10%, something more reasonable. And the overall, as I mentioned before, the overall is an in improvement of 13%. So I'm just throwing out percentages here, but I hope it's meaningful. Now the big one, and and I went back and looked at this because Google Analytics is pretty cool and you can go extract very interesting information. So I created a custom report where I just looked at the traffic on those 10 blog posts that were edited. And when we look at you know, a 30 day period, um, and then compare it to the previous month, that is the 13% improvement, right? That's the 13% improvement. However, it's also interesting to look back at the previous year to remove seasonality that may be in play and just remove some of that. And just to see like the growth over, you know, 2018 versus 2019. So as I'm looking at this same period, the 30-day period, after the um, improvements were done, I can see that it's a 22.3% improvement over last year. So I'm comparing like roughly April of 2019 to April of 2018. So very, you know, very good impact um, just overall. And I'm like, well, this is great. I want to do this to more post. I wanted, I, I just want them to take care of it for me. Let's, uh, let's go on a little tangent here. It's related though. Trust me. Um, it fits in to exactly what we're talking about here. So I often get contacted about like auditing people's sites and coaching and, and that sort of thing. So if you're interested in that stuff, by the way, you can go to nichesiteproject.com slash hire dash me. You should be able to find it pretty easy. I think there's like a, a link in the footer. You know, if you just end up on Niche Site Project, you should be able to find it. But one of the main things that I, you know, find is that people can get results pretty quick with an existing site if they go back and improve the content. So that's like one of the awesome things that you can take advantage of is on-page and on-site modifications often provide a really good result much faster than an off-page SEO effort. The punchline is when I go audit someone's site and I see maybe they're getting, we'll just make something up and say they're getting you know, 20,000 to 
50,000 visitors per month. They're making some good money. Um, they have quite a few posts. They see what's working on their site. And you can look at someone's site and often identify, right, the 80-20 pretty quickly, right? You can just go to uh, Google Analytics, have a pretty good idea like where the traffic's going. Typically, you're going to find an 80-20 situation, not always, but you should be able to find the, you know, 10 posts that seem to be bringing in the most traffic. If you go and have a look at those, you'll probably find that you can improve certain posts and, you know, simulate exactly or emulate rather exactly what we've done here. Now, if you, again, if you want to take another manual stab at it, I I do highly encourage you to check out the, you know, the search console and extract whatever data you can from there. But also, if you do identify your top, we'll just say 10 posts or so, the top 20% of your posts that get the most traffic, they're probably ranking number one for several things. And that often triggers people to not do anything with them, right? They think, hey, it's number one. There's no need to mess with it anymore. However, the counterintuitive thing to do is to go back and have a look at those. Um, You know that Google likes those pages. It's already ranking well. It's getting organic traffic. What if you go back to those and you add, for example, an FAQ section, frequently asked questions section at the end of the post? Um, It's very easy to get those uh, questions. You could just Google the term or a related term. um, And then a lot of times Google will have a list in the SERPs that's the results page where they tell you other questions that people ask related to that search query. So Google literally tells you other things that people are asking. And guess what? When you go take a look at hit the SERPs in that section, there's links, right? They have the answers to those sections or answers to those questions in the FAQ section in the SERPs. The point is you can add, say, five to 10 questions related to that term or search and beef up your content. And you know it's relatively optimized for those other questions that may come through. Now, you may not notice, um, let's say you're ranking number one for a couple of terms on that post anyway. You, you know, you're probably not going to move up if you're already ranking number one, right? However, you will be able to pull in more long tail traffic. All right, that is the whole point of this exercise is pulling in more long tail traffic that's even more specific that can serve more specific individuals that are searching for something like just for them. So those are just a couple ideas. Again, um, I do encourage you to check out Content Refined to save a little time. But if you're on a budget, a lot of people are on a budget or they're just getting started or they don't have enough to reinvest yet. That is okay. You can do this on your own. And I've given you hopefully at least a couple ideas. And maybe if you don't follow exactly what I said, you'll still be able to, you know, take the good parts from <laughs> of what I've said and then, you know, put your own spin on it so that you can use it and take advantage of, you know, improving existing content as well. All right, I've rambled on enough here and I need to take Georgie for a walk. Sunny outside, so I'm going to get out of here, go on a walk, enjoy the fresh air. Everyone have a great day out there. Again, thanks again to Maddie and the folks at Content Refined. Really do appreciate it, and we'll catch you on the next episode.